looking at these makes you traumatized? Hell yeah. So, how to actually get this nightmare and turn it into a less traumatic experience? Let's start with the base, the foundation of geometry nodes. This is your group input, and this is your group output. This contains the stuff that you can see in the modifiers tab, so you can change them easily. And this is what this geometry nodes spit out in the end. Every node you put between makes your stuff different. This is your best friend, the spreadsheet. It gives you information about your mesh, curve, whatever. And speaking of that, you can probably see this list here. And you probably wonder, what, what are even these? And why there are so many of them? In Blender, you have different type of objects or meshes. Regular meshes, curves, grease pencils, points, volume grids, and instances. These are called, in a fancy way, domains. Each of these types is different in some way, and that's the reason they are separated. They all contain different data, scientifically called attributes. So let's take this cube here, it's just a regular mesh, so it's built up by vertices, edges, faces, and face corners. You can preview all of them on your spreadsheet, and as you can see, there's some data about them. Our attributes. So vertices have a position. Faces have a Boolean attribute, whether they're shaded smooth or not, face corners, UV maps, and edges. Edges just don't have anything. But all of them have one thing in common, the indexes, which are basically unique IDs, and that will be important later. Backing to my thought, by changing attributes between these two nodes, we are overwriting these values. Let's use the most basic node possible, the set position node. To add anything, just press Shift plus A and start typing whatever you need. In our case, set position. Put it between these and set one of these values to something. You see the cube moving, and you can also see the position Z attribute being updated. But that's cool, but why the hell should I care about these numbers? Let me use an even simpler example to show that. Just two dots. You actually can use these attributes, basically recall them. To access the position attribute, you bring this node, plug it into the offset, and see what happens. Our points have moved by one meter, but why? Remember when I told you about indexes? You're basically recalling the position attribute from each vertex and adding it to this vertex. So the vertex with index zero moved by the position attribute from vertex that had the index zero. Quite simple, right? But no worries, let me torture you a bit more. Add another set position and plug the exact same position node into this offset. Points moved again, but why the hell by 2 meters if they are recalling the same data? Now, oh, actually, they don't. These nodes work in reverse. In other words, this node is basically telling the set position node, what geometry data should I recall from myself? So, he's recalling these after the first transform has already happened. And if we had more attributes assigned to the vertices, we could also use them. Okay, now let's talk about the node types. These green ones do something to the mesh. Uh, these blue and purple ones do the math. And these red ones recall attributes. I can't explain all the nodes in one tutorial, but let's create something really fast so you get the basics, learn the workflow a bit, and some tricks. So, create a cube, add a new geometry node setup, add a grid, plug it into the group output, and connect size X and size Y to the group input node. Now, you can change the grid size from the Modifiers tab. Do the same for vertices X and Y. Go to wireframe mode and increase this integer. More wires, nice. Now, add the Mesh to Points node. Set it to Faces. It turned our faces into small dots. Add Instance on Points node and everything disappeared. Why? Because we are instancing nothing. We need to put something here, so just drag our grid mesh to the instance socket. And to not make look this node tree like shit, move the mesh to points a little bit up. And by holding shift plus right mouse button, you cut the wire like that, adding a reroute point. Literally, making your node trees organized will save you from schizophrenia. Let's keep going. Select these nodes, press Ctrl J, click F2, and name this frame even more organized. Now add rotate instances node, set this to 45 degrees. Add scale instances node, set it to point two. Duplicate this Scale Instances node and put it here. Take Position node here and plug it here. And start wondering, 
What the f has just happened? No worries, you'll understand in the future. Hold the output of this node, stop holding it. Type. Distance. Click Enter. Now, each instance is recalling the position attribute and mapping the distance between its position and the vector 0, 0, 0, which is in the middle. Hold Shift plus Control and left click this and this. Change this to instance as we have instances. Now you're previewing the data you've just created, and that makes sense. This instance has a position of 0, 0, 0, and if you check the distance between 0, 0, 0, and 0, 0, 0, you'll get 0, and that's why it's black. Whiter color equals higher value. Delete the viewer node. Realize instances to make these actual geometry. Add distribute points on faces node. Create Suzanne. Go back to our nodes tree. Take Suzanne with us. Add instance on points. Plug Suzanne in. Take this type random value and enter. And watch the beautiful work of art you've just created. This is looking terrible to be honest, but I wanted to show you the most commonly used nodes. And with this knowledge, you should get all other tutorials way easier. Speaking of that, maybe you'll create this. <laughs>